This video is sponsored by Polly. If you guys enjoy the following B-roll, please consider subscribing. It's just one click. Hey. That's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky, come get high with me. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? What is going on guys, my name is Andres, I'm a web developer and computer science student and for reasons we've been all experiencing this past year, I've been pushed to work a lot from home, to the point that I barely get to leave my room, whether that's for school, hanging out with friends, playing video games or simply doing web contracts. And you might be wondering, well what does this have to do with having a second desk? Well, the simple answer to that is cutting down on distractions. Let me explain. For the past year, many of us have been forced to lead our lives in confinement, leading to the fact that anything we used to do outside is now done inside, and by condensing so much into one single space, well, we become overwhelmed, unproductive, and Minecraft freaks. But bro, 100%! Next year, wow. Minecraft gladiators. These past few months, I've been realizing that maybe a second desk wouldn't be such a bad idea, and so I started to put one together, and here's why I think you should. It doesn't necessarily need to be a full desk setup, but simply a space that allows you to remove all distractions and do your work without feeling like you need to check in with the world every 12 minutes. Allowing myself to create a space facing the other direction in the same room was a game changer. Not only that, but the fact that I carefully chose peripherals that are for productivity purposes was ideal. The team at Poly was aware about the project and they've allowed me to expand my toolset with a couple of their products. Lately, the way I have been dealing with calls related to web services, my canvas company, or waiting in line at a call center has been ideal. The PolySync 20 has allowed myself to stay away from the phone by being connected at the same time. Pairing it to my phone and using it as my speakerphone is awesome. I am able to charge my device with it, hang up and pick up calls, and even use its programmable button to do things like battery high phone one connected and since i do enjoy zoning out the voyager focus provides great noise cancellation seamless connectivity to my computer and great mid tones in stereo and so my communication tools were covered and allowed me to increase my productivity and hybrid working within this setup on top of that, my keyboard and mouse of choice have been MX products from Logitech. I wanted tools that deeply focus on productivity rather than gaming, and I also brought my ergonomic chair to this setup because this has been overall comfortable enough for my long coding sessions. But as I discussed in a previous video, I think the lack of seat padding has finally been a good thing. It has pushed me to stand up even more which is great for when you're working long periods of time, and even though this setup is being powered by a gaming laptop, I decided to take it the extra mile and order a MacBook Air so I can only focus on development work and diminish the possibility of gaming. Overall, the desk has been great for writing, designing, and coding, and I think the combination of having a monitor that is not for gaming, peripherals that are only for productivity, and an overall workspace that feels like work truly allows myself to be immersed into my own world and avoid any distractions. Now I recommend putting both workspaces into practice and recognize that you're only allowed to do certain things within each space. This is exactly why your second space should only have work related tools. If you urge to check your phone, to go on Facebook or watch funny videos, do it, but build a habit to do it within your other desk. Prioritizing your work and being able to be disciplined enough to avoid always being at your gaming setup is a topic for another day, but the important thing is that you are aware of your boundaries and recognize the time you spend at each desk. In my case, playing Minecraft, hanging out with friends, and creating any sort of content is done within my gaming setup, but I develop, design, 
do homework and listen to class with my productivity space. I am mindful that I'm there to work and the fact that I can get rid of my phone while still being connected is definitely a big plus. Having the necessary apps to get my work done allows me to avoid additional distraction and always reminds me that I'm here for work purposes. So it's important to establish a strategy that constantly reminds you of the things you should do and shouldn't do. But moving back and forth between my desks allows me to interconnect them in a way that wouldn't interfere with my momentum. Let me explain. Scripting is done with my productivity desk, but voiceovers are done with my gaming setup. Now, moving back and forth doesn't mean I'm going from being productive to being unproductive. It simply means that there is additional work to be done somewhere else. And as many of you know, once you've got momentum, it's very hard to drop everything and start playing video games or watching videos. Creating a cycle between both of your desks should only be done if you think your gaming setup can add to your work. Whether that's video editing, voiceovers, manipulating heavy 3D renders, all these things should only be an add-on to your productivity desk. And since I'm able to use the power of Google Drive to maintain files in one single spot, it makes it a lot easier to change from one device to the other in terms of work. So create a cycle that doesn't interfere with your productivity and use your momentum. And other than this, there are plenty of other things to consider when setting up a second spot. Oh, f <laughs> Ambient noise, comfort, lighting, and your type of work. Some people like using rain sounds, the blurred overlapping conversations in the background, or simply deep dead silence to be able to work, and that is totally fine. Comfort too should be taken into account. I happen to have an ergonomic chair that is comfortable enough for me to feel like I'm at work, and I enjoy having a lamp in the corner to set different tones when I feel like it, but we all happen to do different types of work. It might turn out that you don't need any electronic devices for your second workspace, and this is why I think it's important to always aim for minimalism and have exactly the required tools for your work to be done. I hope my personal experience allows your workflow to acquire a second workspace and helps you understand how it is possible to make all of it work. Always remember that it is important to choose the right tools, be mindful of your productivity workspace, and allow yourself to gain momentum with the help of both your setups. If you found this video to be valuable, please let me know in the comment section down below. I tell stories with tech and it allows me to share my personal experiences online. People of the internet, I hope I make your working from home more enjoyable. I'll see you in the next one. Before you guys leave, here's a $5 coupon from Foot Locker for my OGs. I really appreciate you guys staying till the end of the video. But let me show you something. So I was currently editing the video and I received something from Apple. This right here, guys, is MacBook Air and I'm going to be doing a programmer's review. This thing looks so freaking good. I think you guys are gonna like it. Coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate applying my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom line.